Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I'm painting a black mug. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that I've been playing with this Pabo paint, Porcelain 150 it's called. And once it's been dried for 24 hours, you bake it in the oven and it becomes dishwasher safe. Now, just for piece of information, um, it's dishwasher safe and don't let it touch anything while it's in the dishwasher. I have had a couple of my mugs, um, they have been sitting touching each other in the dishwasher. The paint got really, really hot in the dishwasher and it fused them together and then you pull apart and you lose a little bit of this one onto a little bit of this one. Only tiny little bits. Like... Just, you know, where the little edges, just, just kissing kind of deal. But, um, just FYI, and if you are going to paint and sell them, please, please, please give that information to your clients. Now, I'm painting this old mug, which has been, it's one of those things that kind of appeared out of nowhere. You have no idea where it came from. Um probably was in the truck one day some staff member left it there then never claimed it you know it's it's come <laughs> and it's not the prettiest of things it's not my favorite mug I never ever use it um it's even you know it's a cheap 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 mug anyway gonna make it pretty the other thing is I've got a client who has commissioned a um she bought this soap dispenser and it's black so i wanted to play with colors as to what colors i would put on a black background because a lot of these porcelain paints are see-through they um, are transparent so that's what we're doing today we are playing with colors and we are playing with backgrounds so what I've chosen to start with is this um, pewter. It's kind of a silvery, dark grey silver. Um, and I'm going to use a little bit of that. And then I'm going to I'm going to layer the pewter. Now, one piece of information about this pewter is it does go powdery really a lot so uh, let me just move that out of the way so I can do this with a little bit more ease for you and I'm just going to pour a little bit of white before I pour in my yellow should have taken all the tops off before I started um, so that there's a this. Gotta keep them separated. Bum, bum, bum. Gotta keep them separated. So I'm going to do that rotating. You can't see what I'm doing because it's not easy. When I've got the side angle going on, let's show you what it's got what's in there at the moment see look we got I know what I could do try and do that there we go that's better isn't it okay so another little bit of white just to keep it separated from the yellow and then I'm just going to do a little bit of pewter directly with the yellow there and that's about all you need guys found about 20 mils is about all you need for a coffee mug now if you're new to my channel and you're just discovering this stuff um, there's a little bit of information I need to give you the website says that it is that not to put it where food is going to be. Now, 
The reason for not putting it where food is going to be um, is because when your utensils, it's not damage proof. It doesn't become, um, you know, glaze like you would have a, on a normal mug. Uh, it is still paint. It's still damageable. So if you had it where your teaspoon was going to be stirring or on a knife or some a plate where a knife and fork were going to be hitting, it's not good. So I'm going to pour here at the lip and let it run down. Um, it is non-toxic paint Concentrating. Any of you that watch my re videos regularly will know that if I'm concentrating, I don't talk a lot. Just letting that paint slowly pour out. The less paint you've got in your container, the longer it takes to get out <laughs> okay started our second round Now, some of you might want to go around and cover the whole mug. And if you want to do that, awesome. I've done that a number of times. Go check out my other videos. This one, I'm just going to let it run wherever it runs and see what shows up. Now there is silicon in the yellow. I stirred that into the pot last time I used it. But I didn't re-stir before I started this time. Um, there's still quite a bit of paint in here. It's just... Having problems coming out. I'm going to stop there and just let that dribble. It's quite funky. I like it. I like the multiple layers. You go around once and it gives you something and then you go around again and it gives you another 
another layer, another depth, another twinge of possibilities. <laughs> Super cool. One thing I would like to make sure is that I don't end up with big see um how you see how on the edge of the cup these drips are quite thick looking drips. I don't actually desire to have that in the finished mug. But I also don't want to have it. I don't want to force it and ruin it. Alright, I'm going to let this dry as soon as the lawnmower has just been started up. Um, might just run round with the torch. Just get any air bubbles out. Oh, there's some silicon happening in there, guys. Just some tiny little freckles. You see those tiny little silicon cells? How cool are they? I wonder how they'll dry. It's quite often on these three Ds when they when you get the little silicon cells or even the big silicon cells, they start to warp as they continue to run, and you can already see that starting to happen there. It's definitely interesting. I like it. I would like this to be a little bit more. Right, now, some of you may know that I have been playing with the, the drips on these. All right, just bear with me, I'm going to reposition you. All right, we're back. Now, some of you know that in the past I have been using cabochons, cabochons, glass cabochons, and picking up the drips and making some pretty stuff. And the cool thing is that once you bake them, because of course you can bake um, glass, glass cabochon, 
just got a bit of sticky blue tack there and I'm just gonna push that down and just keep pushing until it's covered the whole of that and then lift it back up again and so I've now got a very funky looking And dip it again, just that back corner, just to make sure that's completely covered. Here we go. So there's the underside, and there's what you'll see through the glass. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to let that dry as well, and I'll come back to you once they're all dry, and you'll get to see what magic's been created. I'll see you in three, two, one. All right, here it is. Now, working it that way with the layering of the white, the white tends to be quite um, opaque. Um, so it has allowed the yellow to pop out. Um, the silver pewter is there. Um, you can just see there the pewter is against the black and it's it's visible wouldn't say it's great um, now while this was drying I actually well, once it was dry uh, yesterday afternoon I um, I flipped it over and I painted on the bottom each of the colors that I've got currently just straight onto the black and as you can see the um the blue basically disappears the orangey red does pretty good um yellow basically disappears the pink color and the white color and the pewter all seem to work quite well so i will be showing this to my customer and saying what colors would you like dear <laughs> Um, you know, this is a good example where layering with the white gives the yellow that capacity to stand out, but it also does, you know, lighten it. Um, but without the white behind it, meh, wrong, doesn't work. So there you go, guys. This one, as I said, it wasn't a nice cup to start with. Um... And I might even just peel it off and play again. <laughs> I haven't baked it. This is not unbaked and only in a day since I put it on here. The, the um, guidelines with this paint, uh, seen as so many of you ask every time I do a video with it. Uh, after 24 hours, you bake it at 150 degrees C, which is 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, for 35 minutes and that will set it and make it dishwasher safe now oh if you leave it for 72 hours without baking it it will make it hand washing safe so um up to you whether you want it dishwashing safe as i said in the um earlier in the video I have had it where a couple of them have sat next to each other actually touching in the the dishwasher and they've um, the even though they've been baked and their dishwasher safe the two touching together have actually pulled paint off one of them so just be aware of that um, yeah so that was a great experiment and I suppose you're wanting to see what my cabochon ended up like. So here we go. Dun, 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 dun. So that's the side that came out of the paint. And let's take the... Polish it up for you. <laughs> so it has some funky stuff going on. Um... And then over here where it hit the white, 
it's interesting. Let's see what trying to get through the glare is always fun when working with cabochons. Taking photos of them to sell them is almost nigh impossible. Anyone got any hints and tips on that? I would love to hear it. Um, sorry, it doesn't want to focus very well. So there you go. I'm not sure about this one. If you like it, then you better put a ring on it. <laughs> if you would like me to send this to you, then five dollars it's yours plus postage um yeah i'm not overly excited about it but if you want it you can have it cup is not for sale <laughs> all right guys i adore you all and um what magic can you create in your life your living and in your art what are you unwilling to be that if you were willing to be, could give you even more joy in your life and living. Have fun. I adore you. Come join us on Acrylic Pouring for Fun Facebook group if you want to. And what else is possible? Bye-bye.